Hey there, we got a work day on the greenhouse today. If you guys have been following along, you guys know that we've been trying to prep this in here and get this ready for growing in the ground. So we've already gotten most of the gravel out and now we're trying to get the landscape fabric up and we're gonna till it and do a bunch of stuff. I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of challenges, but I'm gonna take you guys along for the ride. So this is the current state of the greenhouse right now. Pretty much all this area out here has been cleared out uh, over the last couple of work days that we had in here. We are leaving some gravel on the ends and on the side because on the side, that's where we're gonna put our nursery tables. And so right now, uh, we're just doing some detail work. There's just a little bit of rock uh, around the edges here we wanna get up uh, before we pull up the landscape fabric because it's a lot easier to get rock up off the landscape fabric than off of the, the ground. So we're gonna do that and then we will cut up the landscape fabric and try to give it a nice till uh, just to break the ground so we can plant some cover crops. All right, so we're just clearing out the last little bit along the edges here. So a little bit of little diligent, slow work here. We're trying to make sure we get all the gravel up so that when we till it, we, uh, we don't till it in. And then uh, let me show you what the ground looks like under here. So this is like really, really compacted clay. Uh, we did try to get the broad fork in there. Didn't really do much, but yeah, this is what we're working with. Six years of gravel on top of this. All right, so we got the area cleared out, but we're gonna push the gravel back another foot or so, just so we have a little bit more room to work with. Uh, we really just don't want to, you know, till in any of the gravel. So just gonna push it back just a little bit. So we're plugging away here. We cleared off this line. And Kate here is just cutting this at the right uh, width so that we can start pulling up the landscape fabric. A lot of people here helping out, so this should go fairly quickly. We'll see. All right, so we're ready to pull back some of the landscape fabric here. Let's show you guys what it looks like under here. Wow. Totally what I expected, but man, just, just incredible. It's crazy. Got a lot of work to do. So things are going kind of too smoothly. I was anticipating something happening today. Never know what, but as Gene likes to say at Raleigh City Farm, it's like one step forward and three steps back, and then we get it done. So pulling up the landscape fabric and we found more gravel underneath the landscape fabric. Check this out. Yeah, so we're gonna have to deal with this. Uh, I have no idea how deep it is, uh, but we'll figure it out. All right, so sorry it's a little noisy. Uh, we got the fans running in the greenhouse, but I want to take a second to talk about tilling. You guys know I'm a no-till farm, uh, and the only time I even consider tilling is before we start preparing beds. We had to, if you guys have been following along, we had to um, till the field just to level it out and to get it to a place where we could work with the land. And you know, before you build beds, because they're permanent beds, you want to take the time to do what you need to do ahead of time. So if you need to disturb the ground, make sure you take care of that now. I don't own a tiller. Um, I've barely, I've touched a BCS once before. So I really like, this is not a tool I know much about. Um, you guys have probably seen a lot of other market gardeners use them and there's some great uh, uses for them. Uh, this one we borrowed from Sonia and Tim at Terra State Farm. So big thank you to, the, to them for letting us borrow this. But we're gonna get this inside just to break ground so we can work and we can kind of level things out a little bit. We're gonna incorporate some compost. Um, I think it's absolutely necessary here, but we will not till it again. This is a one-time thing. So maybe it's, uh, a BCS is something that can be shared amongst a couple of farmers, bought collectively, or maybe you can just borrow it from a friend, those sorts of things. But I don't think this tool would have a place on the farm here, but let's try to get it inside. All right, so I'm a little bit nervous. Um, let's see if this works. The tiller is like just the right width as the door. So we'll see what happens. Oh man. All right, looks like we got it in. I thought we we're gonna take the door apart. Awesome. All 
All right, so quick initial round of tillage here just to see what's going on. Super compact as we expected. Um, it's actually a little bit wetter on this side. Some of the water's been creeping in from the outside, uh, coming down that little hill there. So we're gonna have to address that in the future, which we already knew. Um, but some of the issue is just, it's so dry, it's hard to, hard to till it. So we're gonna water it down a little bit and give it another go. But man, this is, uh, let me show you this. I mean, this is the kind of stuff we're dealing with. Just super heavy clay, um, totally nice and solid, but as expected. All right, so the first round of tillage here looks pretty good. Um, that side over there is a little bit drier, so Gene's gonna run over another pass. We're just gonna lay down a little bit of compost and we're gonna till it in just to get some really good organic matter in the ground. And that'll just help long-term and help get these cover crops established and get some biology in here, get some uh, other nutrients and stuff. So we're just gonna put this out, not too much at a time, but you know, just enough so we can feel like we're doing something good here. And then just spread it out with the rake. I don't know, not being super precise here. We are gonna be doing um, lasagna beds uh, down the road. So I don't wanna put a ton of compost deep into the ground because we're gonna be building beds on top anyways, but we really gotta get some structure in the ground. And we're gonna do that with uh, the compost and also the cover crops because the roots will start digging in the ground and getting that going. But just a little bit in here just to wake up the soil a little bit. And uh, again, put organic matter in the ground to give it some structure. And then after we get this all spread out, we'll come back through and uh, run the tiller again just to mix it in. So we pushed through and got a thin layer of compost out here and just now gonna till it in and hopefully level a little bit. Um, and I think another pass with the tiller will help. I mean, it was just, the ground was so hard. so. Hopefully we'll get this all leveled out and mixed in. That way, you know, after you till, it definitely compacts even more than it was before. Although I don't know if it could have been any more compacted than it was then. But by incorporating the compost, we'll add some structure and some organic material. So Gene's gonna get that done and uh, we should be able to put on some cover crop when he's done. Man, this looks incredible. Um, obviously it always looks good after you till, but I think getting the compost in definitely adds to the texture in here. Uh, we're just gonna quickly rake it out smooth before we seed it and uh, we'll get that done. But you know, this is a great start. I think this is the approach that's gonna work here. All right, so we got this all raked out. It's looking awesome and it feels very fluffy as it usually does after you till. Um, and so right now we just raked it smooth, which is great. And Michaela's over here sowing cover crop and it's kind of a tricky time to, to plant cover crop because we're in mid-September and so we're, you know, we're in between summer and winter cover crops. And so we're planting buckwheat today and there weren't many options when I went to the store this morning. And so I was going to do some sort of millet, buckwheat, cow pea, maybe combo, but they only had buckwheat. So we're going with buckwheat. Um, we're only going to give it about probably a couple of months here. And because we do want to get beds going, you know, probably built before the end of the year. So we'll see how that goes. And so we're just gonna let this go for a couple months. And we're, as I mentioned before, we really need to add some organic matter into the ground, uh, wake up the soil biology, get photosynthesis going on and just create living soil again. This has been dead and, and you know, compacted. So this is our best bet. And it's also a pretty inexpensive option. Um, you know, a few pounds of cover crop seed is pretty cheap and just using time and biology to make it happen. But that's what's going on in here. And so she looks like she's almost done putting out the seed. We'll rake it in and water it in and should be good to go for a little while. All right, so I forgot my uh, like lawn seeder today, but we did it by hand, which worked fine. So now Michaela is just running over this with a uh, with a soft rake, just to get some more um, soil seed contact. That way, uh, hopefully, we'll get a better germination. And then we're just gonna water it in. Should be good. All right, looking good. Let's get some water on it. So next step, watering it in. Uh, we don't have irrigation in here. In fact, we don't even have a permanent line set up in the tunnel yet. So we're just using a hose and we're just gonna have to hand water this until it germinates. Um, it takes a little bit more time, but we're gonna eventually put drip irrigation on these beds probably. And uh, we're gonna run a line in here for all the, for a watering one for all the nursery stuff. So we just gotta get the cover crop growing. So we'll just come every day and make sure it's uh, 
nice and watered in, and that way we can get it to grow. We're just finishing watering this in. It's looking unbelievably fantastic. So really excited. Um, this is a project we've been looking at getting started for a long time, and it feels great to have it underway. And at least now we can let the biology do its thing for a while and just feeling really positive about it. But I just want to say, like, if you have big ideas, big plans, ambitious projects, like, they are doable. You just have to, you know, stay focused and, and, and keep your eye on the, on the prize and uh, just be determined. We're just not scared of those products here at Raleigh City Farm. Um, you know, myself and Gene and the other people here, all the interns, like, you know, we're just... We know it's possible, you just gotta do it. So this is gonna be a huge addition for the farm. We feel very lucky to have acquired the greenhouse and gonna be able to use this space to grow more food for our community and it just is fantastic. And I just wanna say, uh, take a moment here to thank you guys for watching the channel and for you know supporting me through uh, everything that's been going on the last year and a half or so. So I really appreciate it. And um, I just feel lucky to have you guys with me along the way here. So thanks so much for watching. Again, if, if you're not subscribed, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you in the next one. fabric up, try to till it, try to get the ground going. I cannot dare. And at Raleigh City Farm, as Gene likes to say, one step forward, wait. Three, one step forward, three steps back, we get, <laughs> then we get it done. Is my head in the shot? Think I can finish my video out from over here? I'm too far away, that would be ridiculous.